Now then there are units. Uh, normally in India, we stick to MKS units, which are meters, kilograms and seconds. And in terms of uh, for liquids, it is liters and for land, it is hectares. But suppose you get a document or a text from US of America, those people, they are still sticking to British units, foot, pound, seconds, miles, gallons, acres. Now here, my advice will be, you have to translate means mention the original units. But since you are in India, in the bracket, you should convert the values into MKS units and mention them in the um, uh, in the bracket so that you make the life of the Indian uh, client easier. Then there are standards. There are various international standards like IS is Indian standard, DIN is German standard, JS is Japanese standard. Now, I believe in value addition. So if I get a German uh, document for translation in uh, English and which is to be used in India, I will not stop at just mentioning the DIN number, DIN standard number. I will give a short description of what that standard is about in brackets, that is not translation. And if possible, I will also mention the equivalent Indian standard so that again, I'm adding value to my translation, even though it is not expected of the translation. Then we turn to legal domain. In legal domain, you will get various documents like patents, agreements, lease and rent documents, technology transfer agreements. Then in India, you get uh, English to Marathi or Marathi to English translations of 712 extracts, uh, mutation documents. These are all pertaining to lands and properties. Then there are police records like FIRs. There are passports and visas. There are government orders, resolutions, which are called as GRs, government letters, correspondence. And then of course, there are court orders and legal notices. Now in case of legal documents, the first important thing is you have to understand the basic intent of the document, what the document is about. So naturally, a partnership deal will be totally different from a lease document. Secondly, you have to use appropriate stock phrases. Now, there can be a difference in the phrases used in English and the phrases used in Marathi. For example, if there is a sale deal of a property, say of a flat, then in English, there will, it will always be party of the first part or buyer and party of the second part seller. But in Marathi, the normal uh, practice is to say Lihun Denara and Lihun Ghenara. So Lihun Ghenara is normally the, uh, always the buyer and Lihun Denara is always the seller. So you have to use the words which are uh, normally used. You can't translate them as Karedida and Vikreda. No, you have to use the words that are uh, colloquially used. Then it is extremely important not to miss any words, any terms or any clauses because otherwise that will create a big problem in the final document. In legal documents, you come across very long sentences with multiple sub clauses it is always possible. So you have to read the whole sentence twice, thrice till you really understand the meaning of that sentence. Otherwise you are in trouble. And finally, you have to do editing and proofreading of a legal document extremely carefully because a lot is on stake on legal documents. Legal domain. I would like to speak in detail about land records and revenue records. Now, India has a history of land records and revenue system which can be tracked back to even 14th century. The present system has been inherited from the British times. So it has got a peculiar terminology uh, and you have to understand that terminology. Otherwise, you will not be able to translate a Marathi 712 extract into English or a mutation doc document into English. So you have to study the doc Marathi documents, understand the meaning of the book, all the terms and the syntax, and then only start uh, translating these documents. Also, in different states of India, there are different convention and terms. For example, land measure. In Maharashtra, it is hectares, but in Bihar, it will be bigger. In some other places, it will be acres. So you have to do research. If you get a document from, say, Uttar Pradesh, you have to understand what is the meaning, or there will be a term like Thasta. It is actually a, a term for 712 extract there. So you, have, you need to do research and then only start uh, translating a document. In case of government, GRs and orders, or in letters, there is always a mention of a law. Now, each law is either state specific like for only applicable for Maharashtra, or it can be applicable for the goal of the nations, which has been passed by the Union of India. So you have to be careful to understand what kind of a law it is. 
secondly almost all laws have equivalent names in the local language for example uh, provident fund act has a marathi name bhavishya nirvana nidhi tayla so you should do research and use proper translation in the local language or vice versa if it is bhavishya nirvana tayla and you are translating it in english you have to say provident fund act so research about name then there is amendment here the, the act or the law may be amended twice thrice so you have to ensure that the latest amendment is being used or the previous amendment is being used and the year is always mentioned so be careful about that now we come to business domain in business domain you can have correspondence or emails you can have appointment letters vision statements standard operating procedures emergency procedures then compliance policies and salary slips now even here sometimes research is very important or proper translation of uh, the terms is very important i'll give you a very funny example that the first time i translated a salary slip from german to english i was at sea completely because there were so many short forms i couldn't understand that for uh, taxes to be deducted at source there were at least four categories so i started digging about and on internet i found out that there is a standard format in uh, germany for salary slips and there can be taxes like a kirschtreuer that means a church tax <laughs> i was amazed so one when you are translating documents like this uh, it is extremely important that you first understand the document if not do research on it ask about and then only start translating the document or there can be very peculiar words for example compliance policies recently i did a document on uh, whistle blower compliance now there is no research uh, really there is uh, no equivalent word for a whistle blower so i had to devise a word so i devised the word zaglian because he awakens people about right doing whistle blowing i had to ask the client i had to explain to him why i am using this word and fortunately the client accepted it so in doing business domain you require creativity as well advertisements and promotions so you can get advertisement text you can get sms text then there are press releases and announcements now particularly for advertisement text while translating you should be aware about the local flair of the language you have to be aware of the cultural context of the local language even in sms text sometimes it's uh, recently i did a job for a company who gives tractors and farm equipment on hire to farmers so my language while uh, translating those sms texts had to be simple enough for the farmers to understand same is true for press releases that you have to be aware of the cultural nuances of that press release literature and general no actually this is a vast area there is a huge requirement for local literature to be translated into foreign languages and vice versa foreign literature into indian language at present you can see that a number of books are being translated from english to marathi and it's a good thing because those who are who can't read english who are not really good at english they are an opportunity to be exposed to world literature but unfortunately what i hear because i have never done any uh, translation on a commercial basis recently i did one marathi novel i did translate one marathi novel into english but there they paid me a rate a 20% more than the normal rate but my name is not going to appear on the translation and i really didn't mind it but what i understand the normal scenario is that you are paid a very low rate than the market rate for say marathi to english translation and even that money is paid to you only after the book is physically published so sometimes there can be a gap of 2 years i have heard such cases there was a gap of 2 years from the translation done and the payment received so i won't dare doing this kind of translation i can't simply afford it because i have got other things to do i am here to earn money i will do it for the love of the language but then i won't involve commercials but if you are really interested you can afford to do it <laughs> best of luck then there is a huge opportunity for translation of indian literature from one indian language to another indian language let me tell you these books have been successful like uma kulkarni has translated a number of kannada books into marathi and they have been fairly successful so if you really know two indian languages like gujarati and marathi you can try your hand at that then there is a very interesting and very fulfilling sub domain in literature these are scholarly essays like last year i did some essays to be translated from english to marathi for a website and the topics were so varied that one topic was on a theater 
which is a folk theater in Goa. The other was on archaeological excavations in Kerala. The third was on Prabhat Film Company. So I had to really struggle hard because the language was so heavy. You had to use a equivalent Marathi language. And it was a big education for me. For example, essays of or uh, speeches of Dalai Lama to be translated from English to Marathi was a big challenge. But at the end of the day, it was quite enlightening for me. So though the task is difficult, do try them. You will improve your Marathi or your English. That is for sure. Then there is a requirement of newspaper and media. And let me tell you, they are very tricky. I'll give you an example. I'm not talking about writing in newspapers. I'm talking about translations now. I got a proofreading uh, assignment for media news snippets to be translated into Marathi, from English to Marathi. Now, there was a news where a photographer had shot one celebrity in a particular dress. And the Marathi I translator had translated photographer celebrity now this is very sad so you have to understand the context and then translate so it can be challenging then there are scripts and screenplays like recently i did one uh, marathi feature film where i had to listen to the dialogues and directly translate them uh, into english as subtitles so it was again a very fulfilling uh, assignment and of course i had to be conscious about the frame rate and all these things then there are story adaptions. Again, I haven't done any story adaptions or uh, story translation on commercial basis. I've done them on amateur basis, but I will speak to you about it uh, later on. Then there can be very interesting assignments. Like recently, I did one assignment for Nagpur Metro, where all their standard uh, announcements to be made, they are mechanized. Like they are in on Pune railway station, that bits and pieces of announcements are brought together to create an announcement. So again, from English to local, Nagpur Marathi language was quite an experience.